You might have heard the saying that Wireshark is a network analysis tool that every hacker should be familiar with, but may not know what the term network analysis actually means, or how Wireshark is used. Well don't worry, that's exactly what I'll be covering in this video, and help you understand how hackers can use such a tool to their advantage, so let's get started. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Many people dream of becoming a hacker but lose motivation, as soon as they're faced with seemingly boring IT concepts like data structures or networking. With Brilliant.org, you can learn these foundational skills in a fun and easy way, as they offer a variety of interactive courses on computer science, math, and data science. What makes it special is its graphical UI, that teaches you by making you engage in practical activities, rather than just presenting theory. Maybe you're an absolute beginner and are unsure of where to start in programming. With their new course called Thinking in Code, you can start designing simple programs that solve real-world problems in an easy way. So whether you're an aspiring hacker looking to clarify your concepts, or a professional looking to upskill, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days, and if you sign up using brilliant.org forward slash Ann and Alley, the first 200 of you will get a 20% discount on Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for listening, let's get back to the video. Step number one, download and install Wireshark. Okay so before we dive into what network analysis means and how Wireshark is used, what I want you to do is head over to its official website, and download it according to your main operating system like this. If you're using Kali Linux, you can go ahead and skip this step as it comes pre-installed on it, but for other operating systems, once you've downloaded it, open it and install it. During the installation, you'll be prompted to install these additional packages called NPCAP and USBPCAP to ensure everything works properly, so make sure to include them as well. Once installed, you can launch Wireshark to be greeted with a welcome page like this, and from here, you can basically select the network interface card that you want to analyze the traffic from. Step number two, but what is traffic analysis? Okay so when I say the term analyzing the traffic, what I essentially mean is opening the packets or letters that are being sent from one device to another over a network, and seeing exactly what each one says. Now if you're not sure about what a packet is or how computer networks generally work, I recommend checking out this video first as it will make it easier for you to grasp everything that I'll be talking about here, but for now, just know that if I open up a website on my browser, and want to see what communication is happening between my computer and the web server of this website behind the scenes, I can do that by using Wireshark, and this is what network analysis essentially means. Now the reason why hackers need to be skilled at this involves several factors which I can't go over in this video, but just to name a few, it may help them in using Wireshark with Tor to ensure everything is going right and their anonymity isn't being compromised or identify multiple vulnerabilities within a network before attacking it, and even perform things like a man-in-the-middle attack, where they essentially place themselves between two communicating devices using a tool like Ettercap, and then analyze someone else's traffic with Wireshark to see what websites they're visiting, or capture sensitive information like their passwords. Step number 3, Wireshark Interface. Okay so depending on the network interface cards you have available on your computer, this page might look a little different than mine, but essentially what you want to do here is select the network interface card that you're connected to the internet with, and want to capture packets from. Since I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I'm going to choose this option by double-clicking on it like this. Next, Wireshark will start doing its magic and begin capturing the packets that are being sent from our browser to this web server over the internet, and then save them into a .pcap format, which is a standard file format for capturing packets. Now if we stop capturing the packets by clicking on this red button here, and then assign numbers to all the windows we see within Wireshark, the top window which is labeled as number 1 is called the packet list pane, and this is where all the packets that Wireshark is capturing are shown in real time. Here the source IP address is the device sending the packets, and the destination IP address is the device receiving them. The bottom left window labeled as number 2 is called the packet details pane, and it shows its information on a selected packet from window number 1, whereas the bottom right window is known as the packet bytes pane, and it provides a quick way to see what a payload says in a human readable form, rather than showing the binary representation of data. Step number 4, creating filters. Since modern operating systems constantly send and receive data in the background without any user interaction, Wireshark starts capturing packets the moment you launch it, and so if we want to focus solely on some specific packets, like the ones we captured while we were browsing this website, what we'll need to do is use some specialized filters by typing them here. So if I input a filter called TCP contains, and then specify YouTube like this, you can see that it has shown me one packet that it captured when I searched for YouTube on my browser, and to explore a range of other filters and operators that can be used to search for packets just like this, you can download a PDF that that I prepared by clicking on the link in the description down below. Step number 5, following a stream. Okay so once you've identified the packet that you're interested in, and want Wireshark to open a new tab showing all the communication between your computer and the web server of a specific IP address, what you can do is simply right click on the packet, and then select follow TCP stream like this. Now the reason why you can't understand any of this is because it's encrypted by TLS encryption, which acts as a way to protect the contents of a web page from hackers when they're performing things like a man in the middle attack, 
but if you were testing it on a website that used HTTP in its URL rather than using HTTPS, what you would get is all the communication in plain text like this, and this is the vulnerability that hackers take advantage of. Now all the requests sent here from our computer will be shown in red, and all the responses received from the web server will be shown in blue. Step number 6, the big picture. Finally, another awesome thing that I want to share with you guys before I end the video here, is that if you don't like looking at the captured packets within Wireshark, and prefer to visualize them in a more user-friendly form, what you can do is save the captured PCAP file somewhere on your computer, and then go to this website called apackets.com. Apackets.com is an online tool where you can upload your PCAP files for free, and then easily visualize all the data such as DNS requests, HTTP headers, or even images that Wireshark captured within a few clicks like this. Now keep in mind that if you're using the free version of this tool, any PCAP files you'll upload will be available to be seen by anyone in a public repository, and may compromise your privacy if you're not careful. Anyway guys so that's it for the video, before ending, I'd like to recommend that if you're someone who's just started their journey to become an ethical hacker, and are exploring various tools in the field, go check out my video on Metasploit for beginners as well, as it's another hacking tool that every hacker should be familiar with, and offers an introduction to how various software vulnerabilities can be exploited. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next one.